energy efficient routing transport layer protocol challenges and issues in transport layer protocol the design of transport protocols for wsn for the factors energy efficient routing in most sensor network scenario these devices acquire data from the environment and send it to other nodes for further processing and analysis when such destinations are not within the radio range of the source node immediate sensor nodes are used as relays routing protocol for wireless sensor networks are used to transmit messages from source to destination they can be classified as unicast broadcast multicast unicasting routing is used to send a message generated by a sensor node to a single destination or sink broadcasting is used to send a message from sensor node to every other node in the network multicasting is used to deliver messages from a single source to a set of destination multicasting protocols try to minimize the consumption of network resources for instance sending one copy of data to each destination using unicast is not considered as multicast routing energy efficient unicast energy efficient unicast routing appears to be simple problem take the network graph assign to each link a cost value that reflects the energy consumption across this link and pick any algorithm that computes least cost path in a graph the dijkstra shortest path algorithm is used to obtain routes within minimal total transmission power in fact there are various aspects how energy or power efficiency can be conceived of in a routing contest consider the figure where communication between node a and h including link energy cost and available battery capacity per node is given minimize energy per packet the most straightforward formulation is to look at the energy required to transport a packet over a multi hop path from source to destination the goal is to send to minimize for each packet this total amount of energy by selecting a good route minimizing the hop count will typically not achieve this goal as routes within few hop might include hops with large transmission power to cover large destination distances but be aware of distance independent cost offset in the energy consumption model nonetheless this cost metric can be easily included in standard routing algorithm it can lead to widely differing energy consumption on different node the figure shows various example routes for communication between node a and h showing energy cost per packet for each link and available battery capacity for each node in the example the minimum energy route is a b e h requiring 3 units of energy the minimum hop count route would be a d h requiring 6 units of energy maximize the network lifetime energy efficient transmission is at best a means to an end and the actual end should be the optimization goal the network should be able to fulfill its duty for a long as possible network lifetime which is defined as the time until the first sensor's energy runs out is an important performance metric in wsn routing considering available battery energy this includes maximum total available battery capacity minimum battery cost routing minimum min max battery cost routing conditional max min battery capacity routing minimize variance in power level maximizing the network lifetime is clearly a useful goal as the finite energy supply is node's battery is the limiting factor to network lifetime it stands 
to reason to use information about battery status in routing decisions some of the possibilities are maximize total available battery capacity choose that route where the sum of available battery capacity is maximized without taking needless detour looking only at the intermediate node in the figure route a b e g h has a total available capacity of 6 units but that is only because of extra node g that is not really needed such detours can of course arbitrarily increase this metric hence a b e g h should be discarded as it contains a b e h as a proper subset then comes minimum battery cost routing mbcr instead of looking directly at the sum of available battery capacities along a given path the minimum battery cost routing instead looks at the reluctance of the node to route traffic this reluctance increases as its battery is drained for example reluctance or routing cost can be measured as the reciprocal of the battery capacity then the cost of path is the sum of this reciprocals and the rule is to pick that path with the smallest cost since the reciprocal function assigns high cost to nodes with low battery capacity this will automatically shift traffic away from routes with nodes about to run out of energy as seen in figure route a c f h is assigned a cost of 1 by 1 Plus one by four. That's equal to one point two five. But root A D H only has cost one by three. Consequently, this root is chosen, protecting node C from needless effort. Then comes min-max battery costing routing M M B C R. This scheme follows a similar intention to protect nodes with low energy battery resources. instead of using the sum of reciprocal battery levels simply the largest reciprocal level of all nodes along a path is used as the cost of this path then again the path with the smallest cost is used in the sense the optimal path is chosen by minimizing over a maximum the same effect is achieved by using the smallest battery level along a path and then maximizing over these path values this is then a maximum minimum formulation of the problem as seen in the figure route a d h will be selected conditional maximum battery capacity routing c m m b c r this scheme works as conditionalized upon the actual battery power levels available if there are routes along which all nodes have battery level exceeding a given threshold then select the route that requires the lowest energy per bit if there is no such route then pick that route which ma maximizes the minimum battery level last is the minimize variance in power level to ensure a long network lifetime one strategy is to use up all the batteries uniformly to avoid some nodes prematurely running out of energy and disrupting the node hence routes should be chosen such that the variance in battery energy level between route is reduced so this is all about energy efficient unicast transport layer protocol the transport layer protocol provides end to end segment transportation where messages are segmented into chain of segments at the source and are reassembled back into the original message at the destination node transport protocols are used to mitigate congestion reduce packet loss provide fairness in bandwidth allocation guarantee end to end reliability examples of traditional transport layer protocols include 
transport control protocol tcp user datagram protocol udp sequenced packet exchange protocol spx network link multi microsoft approach to implementing ipx or spx challenges and issues in transport layer protocol wireless sensor network should be designed with an eye to energy conservation congestion control and reliability in data dissemination security and management the congestion control may involve only the transport layer but energy conservation may be related to the physical data link network and perhaps all other high layers designing a new transport layer protocol for wsn should consider the following issues that include induced traffic induced throughput unfairness separation of congestion control reliability and flow control power and bandwidth constraint misinterpretation of congestion completely decoupled transport layer dynamic topology induced traffic unlike wired network ad hoc wireless networks utilize multi hop radio relaying and link level transmission affects the neighborhood nodes of both the sender and receiver of the link in a path having multiple links transmission at a particular link affects one upstream link and one downstream link this traffic at any given link or path due to the traffic through neighboring link is referred to as induced traffic this is due to the broadcast nature of the channel and location dependent contention on the channel this induced traffic affects the throughput achieved by the transport layer protocol induced throughput and fairness this refers to throughput and fairness at the transport layer due to the throughput delay and fairness existing at the lower layers such as the network and mac layer medium access control layers separation of congestion control reliability and flow control the transport layer flow can experience congestion with one, just one intermediate link layer congestion hence in networks such as ad hoc wireless network the performance of the transport layer may be improved if these are separately handled while separating these the most important objective to be considered is the minimization of the additional control overhead generated by them power and bandwidth constraints nodes in ad hoc wireless network face resource constraint including the two most important resources power resource and bandwidth the performance of transport layer protocol is significantly affected by these constraints misinterpretation of congestion traditional mechanism of detecting congestion in networks such as packet loss and retransmission timeout are not suitable for detecting the network congestion in ad hoc wireless network this is because the high error rates of wireless channel location dependent contention hidden terminal problem packet collision in the network path breaks due to the mobility of nodes and node failures due to a drained battery can also lead to packet loss in ad hoc wireless network hence interpretation of network congestion are used in traditional networks is not appropriate in ad hoc wireless network completely decoupled transport layer another challenge faced by transport layer protocol is the interaction with the lower layers wired network transport layer protocol are almost completely decoupled from the lower level in ad hoc wireless network the cross layer int interaction between the transport layer and lower layers such as the the network layer and the mac layer is important for the transport layer to adapt the changing network environment and the last challenge and issue in transport layer is the dynamic topology some of the deployment scenario of ad hoc wireless network 
experience rapidly changing network topology due to the mobility of nodes. This can lead to frequent path break, partitioning and re-emerging re of network and high delay in re-establishment of path. Hence, the performance of transport layer protocol is significantly affected by the rapid changes in the network topology. Generally, transport control protocol design includes two main functions, congestion control and loss recovery. The design of transport protocols for WSN should consider the following factors. They are perform congestion control and reliable delivery of data. Since most data are from sensor nodes to the sink, congestion may occur around the sink. WSN need a mechanism for packet loss recovery such as acknowledgement and selective acknowledgement used in TCP. It may be more effective to use a hop by hop approach for congestion control and loss recovery since it may reduce packet loss and therefore conserve energy. The hop by hop mechanism can also lower the buffer requirement at the intermediate node. Transport protocol for wireless sensor network should simply simplify the initial connection establishment process or use a connectionless protocol to speed up the connection process, improve throughput and low transmission delay. Transport protocols for WSN should avoid packet loss as much as possible since loss translates to energy waste. To avoid packet loss, the transport protocol should use an active congestion control ACC at the cost of slightly lower link utilization. ACC, it triggers congestion avoidance before congestion actually occurs. The transport control protocol should guarantee fairness for a variety of sensor nodes. If possible, a transport protocol should be designed with cross-layer optimization. For example, if a routing algorithm informs the transport protocol of route failure, the protocol will be able to deduce that packet lot loss is not from congestion but from root failure. In this case, the sender may maintain its current route. So these are the design of transport protocols for WSN that are to be considered having the following factors.